Hello everyone and welcome to a BeamNG Drive and Automation kind of video. Today I'm going to be testing my fastest automation cars once again, but these are slightly different cars from last video. Nothing much for me to say except for these are just different cars and they're going to go faster or something. Alright, let's just get into the video. Alright, this car I built the day I filmed this thing, which was two weeks ago because I uh, forgot about the video. But it does go pretty fast, so I thought I just might as well include it. There isn't much to say about it except that it's a failed endurance car. And yeah, that's basically it. It's got a V8, so but that's there's nothing really special about it. But let's see it drive it. It accelerates quite fast for a real wheel drive car. I think it does a zero to sixty in three point something seconds, which is pretty fast for one of these cars. And as you can see, the acceleration stays pretty consistent up until 200 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive for a car with this much downforce. I cut to where it was going 223 miles an hour because that's where it tops out and it was taking a while for it to get to that speed. And yeah, it just tops out there. And next up, we got the Dominator. It was in the last video, but the last video had the Endurance model, which was meant for endurance racing. This one is the 2020 model that I have of the whole Dominator series. I made like seven or eight of them, but this is the 2020 model and just the successor of the 2019 one. It's got a twin turbo V8 that rubs to 9,000 RPM. And paired with a muffler less exhaust, it sounds like an F1 when it's driving. As you can see, this accelerates incredibly fast. Since it's all-wheel drive, it can do 0 to 60 in about 2.7 seconds. It could do it faster if it had a dual-clutch transmission or something, but I like manuals, so yeah. This car has an interesting sound. Like, right next to it, it sounds like a Ferrari. But when you're far away from it, it sort of sounds like an F1. Not really, but just a little bit. And once again, I'm skipping to the part where it's almost at its top speed. And you can see it past that other car right over there. Because I guess it takes longer for this car to reach 225 miles an hour. Okay, on to the next car. This is the Track Finder GTRX that I made right after I filmed the first high speed video. It's got about 200 more horsepower than the Track Finder RT, which is the previous version of this car. Just like the previous version, it has a twin turbo V12 making over a thousand horsepower. And with the extra 200 horsepower, it can go much faster than the RT. Oh, and it's also got a manual. Yeah, a hypercar with a manual. It's still accelerating pretty fast, even at 200 miles an hour. It's pretty impressive. Okay, another jump cut. As you can see, it tops out about 247 miles an hour, but that's still as fast as the RT. I guess for the next model, I'll have to make it even more powerful and to go like at least 270 miles an hour. This is the Groundbreaker, which was in the last video, but I'm putting it in here just because it's pretty fast. It has a twin turbo 13 liter V12 making about 2,600 horsepower, which is incredible. It's my most powerful car yet, and it's still as sketchy as it was last time. Yeah, this is a pretty easy burnout car, but it's not as easy as the one right next to it. But we're talking about this car, and I had to do a bunch of throttle control for this thing. It spins the wheels even at like 170 miles an hour, just basically using 40% throttle the whole time because I don't know, can't do any more than that. Already at 200 miles an hour, and I'm still using a lot of throttle control. This thing is sketchy.
and bam, we're at 300 miles an hour, and it's still going. Well, it could go a bit faster if it, the gearing wasn't set at like 305 miles an hour. But when I was testing out a simple map for the other video, it didn't really get past 305 miles an hour. But I guess the air's different here or something. And on to the next groundbreaker. This is my most recent one. I think I built it around the same time I filmed this video. It's got a slightly smaller 13 liter V12. It's got no mufflers, which the other one had some. And it's making 200 less horsepower. But it has, I think, a bit more advanced aerodynamics. And it has a long gear, which makes it go slightly faster than the other one. As you can see, this does much easier burnouts than the other one. Just mash the brake and the gas, and you've got a burnout. And it's a bit easier to control with 200 less horsepower. Basically, just shift to 6th, and you're good. Since it's more controllable, you can have a much easier acceleration, which makes it look like it's going much faster than the other one. It actually kind of looks scary from this point of view. And just like that, we're going faster than the original Groundbreaker. And it looks like it's topped out at 312 miles an hour. But with 200 less horsepower, that's pretty cool. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.